Welcome to Magical Aspirations, a podcast for magical people where we aspire to gather all of the knowledge magic has to offer, a place to illuminate and demystify all things magical. Hello, hello, beautiful people. Happy spooky season. It is Adriana back with Magical Aspirations. And today we have another juicy episode, lovely conversation. We are going to be speaking with Sam Bowling, the owner extraordinaire of Hands of Fate Nola. And of course, we're also going to be recapping Pagan Pride with our very own Raven, Reverend Raven, tongue tied. Um, So before we get into that, everybody say hello. Hello, hello. Hello. Coco. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me giggle every time. I just it love it. It never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. How is everybody doing today? Good. Now that we got the technology going so we can make the magic, I'm ready. <laughs> Yeah, that Mercury retrograde shadow, y'all, it's still hitting. So if everybody's feeling it, um, same, same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It just seems like the things that should be easier are a little bit harder than they should be, but it makes us appreciate the outcome whenever it comes. Definitely. Mm, yes, snaps to that. Yes, I loved it. <laughs> um, okay, Reverend Raymond, you said you wanted to open up talking about Pagan Pride. How yeah. was it? Yeah, so it was a beautiful, amazingly magical day at the Cluet Gardens um, in the Bywater and just wanted to echo um, the sense of community that we always talk about here on Magical Aspirations. Um, It was really amazing just to see everyone from the community coming together, um, our first big in-person event, Pagan Pride Day, since 2019. Um, so we made it through the pandemic and we all got to come back and enjoy each other's company. There was some amazing performances, classes, our wonderful vendors, um, and our opening and closing rituals, which included everyone from the community. So it really was a magical day. And I'm just so grateful to have been a part of that. Um, So I just wanted to pop on and thank everyone in the Magical Aspirations land who came out and showed your support. Um, Wonderful vendors like Hands of Fate um, Mm -hmm. for being there and being a part. So I just wanted to to start off with that and um, thank the community for being a part of such an amazing event. Yeah, it was. I did not get to go to Pagan Pride. It was my first baby godchild's eighth birthday. So I had to go there. But I really you could feel like the unity and the community and just like kind of the passion behind everybody. I saw a bunch of videos and people posted all of their pictures. It was, even though I wasn't there in person, it still definitely felt like I was there. So thank y'all for that. And thank you for everyone who participated in promoting this wonderful community. Now I'll tell you, we had a blast at uh, Hands of Fate being there. The fact that we actually just got to see each other physically and actually talk and have that commune again um it's huge um i've been missing it and it finally feels like we're starting to get a little bit in stride of the pre-covid feeling or the vibe and that really brought everyone back together in my opinion to kind of remember why we're here that is yes uh, (laughs) yes so all right Mm -hmm. are we ready to get started with some questions because i am itching to talk to Sam about all kinds of things. So I'm just going to go yes. ahead and move forward with that. <laughs> Sam, <on> <laughs> let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, we boom. have gotten season two started with such a big bang. Uh, we know this conversation is going to be a good one. Sam, what are your magical aspirations? Oh, my magical aspirations. Um, I'm just going to tell a little bit of a history of how I got to the space first off, because it's important um, that we kind of think about how we travel this human suit that we're in this lifetime and other ones. Cause um, I was thinking about this earlier that I remember as a kid growing up very religious and like my prayer to God was if there's real magic in the world, I want to know it inside and out Um, that I'm laughing about now as I'm 
sitting here owning Hands of Fate and trying to create it into a larger space for healing and for community. Um, that to me just shows you how real magic really is, you know, from a little boy up to now 50 years old, sitting in the seat of a place that was the first church of witchcraft, um, the first place recognized in the United States and Louisiana as a place for witchcraft um, that could publicly and willingly be open to show. That to me is incredible. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and how did you end up there, Sam? Well, that's kind of what I'm saying with magic is uh, you you do these things through your life. You have different teachers, different situations. You go, go, go. Yeah, you know, it's like, so as a kid, I remember all of that magic, trying to understand magic tricks and things of that nature. And also having weird experiences and, you know, trying to scare myself at night with ghosts and things, not really understanding what at all I was getting into. Um, mm. And then having more as I watched people pass away, as I would get, as I was getting into my teen years, I was having weird visitations happen. Um, mm. And so I really had to wrap my head around, am I crazy like the world tells me I am? Or is this a real thing? And how do I not go crazy? And so the journey really began back in my teen years when my grandmother started visiting me. Um, in my dreams after she passed away and there's a car accident I had that I probably should have died in and I know that it was her energy or those on the other side that made sure I did not um, mm. that's the best way for me to put it and um, from there it kind of went from I and this is up in Iowa in a town of 700 people um, where I grew up right on the Mississippi River 14 hours north of here and then um, I left Iowa and moved to California and lived in the middle of the redwood trees and didn't even realize the magic that was coming from them um, while I was up there. I, I felt it. I knew something was going on. Um, the weird part was, is I was working for a Lutheran church camp and we was running a, a youth director. We had a few hundred, we would have a couple thousand kids that would come through in the summertime. And uh, we had 400 congregations throughout Northern California we dealt with, but I was living with a Wiccan high priest, Druidic high priest in the Santa Cruz mountains. Mm. And our cabin uh, was built in a fairy ring of trees <laughs> um, <laughs> where the mother tree had fallen and they had built this summer cabin, like in the middle of it that kind of went down the little cliffside. I didn't even realize the magic that I was living in the middle of. And I would light a candle at night and say, okay, if I can learn to meditate, teach me how. And I'd wake up like an hour later and go, oh, nothing happened. And I just <laughs> kind of laugh about it now because I'm like, I was doing all of these things, preparing myself to be present where I am now at 50 and not even realizing it. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, that's so good. <laughs> I think weird, a lot of people, crazy, yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> and I think it's so it's so interesting because like we never plan stuff like this, but a lot of the messages that you or the things that you're saying so far echo a lot of our conversation last week or the one that we released last week with Ashara. She's a high priestess mm. in the temple of witchcraft. And the thing that kind of struck me the most about her conversation was how so many magical practitioners come to this for like a place, it comes from a place of healing. And like so many people, mm -hmm. especially immense, you know, we talk about spooky season and all of this stuff. And yeah, there's all kinds of fun in all of that. But like outsiders, to for lack of a better term, when they look at people like us, they think, you know, gross and spooky and like all of your typical like horror things of Halloween. But all of the people that you really meet in this community are just trying to find healing. And like that's such a things that you outsiders wouldn't think really go together. So I love to hear you talk about that as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I think it's, we all look for hope at some point in our lives that, and some meaning and some understanding. And we're brought up in such a religious dogma that is crammed down our throat in all of these different ways. And um, there's bits of truth to so much of it, but it, I, I, we get choked up because we're, we're getting forced to these ideals that aren't, even really talked through, they're just kind of programs in people's heads. Like, this is how it happens. This is what you do. This is how you pray to, re to repent. It's very strange. But when you're putting all of this into young kids and people, it becomes a subconscious mantra in their mind. Mm -hmm. And it almost is its own curse. Um, you know, it's mm -hmm. almost like a curse of religion. I know that that sounds kind of weird, but that's probably my best way to call it is uh, we're told at such a young age that, that 
Jesus is going to save us. And, and this, you got to believe you got to do this. You got to do that. And, and by the age of five or six, it's just an automaton that's repeating all of those words. And um, until you start to have that will come in of life and recognize, wait a second, I don't have to think that way. I don't have to believe that I can question, but it's really the relationships we have and where we grow up. And it's like, had I stayed in my small town and not gotten out to experience some of these things, I would have never exponentially ended up where I am. You know, mm. um, the weird part was, is I go from small town Iowa to Santa Cruz and live there in the mountains and not knowing anyone end up moving to Los Angeles because I always wanted to get into the movie business. And I never, I, I didn't even know what the heck I was doing. I did, hadn't gone to college. Um, I was really kind of tripping over myself at the time, dealing with uh, addictions and things of that nature, trying to level out mm. from drinking and mm. get down to LA. And this whole world of, of other things is in front of me. And I'm like trying to curtail stuff. And I went to counselors and was chatting with counselors and that, and none of them could really fully help me. Mm. Um, and it was very strange. And I met this lady through a series of different workshops that I'd went to and she was a psychic medium. Her name was Pat Chalfont and, um, she passed away a few years ago, but she just started giggling and she patted me on the shoulder and she goes, Oh honey, you just got dead people talking to you. She goes, why don't, why don't you just come and <laughs> let me help you out? <laughs> well, it ended up being nine years of me sitting every Saturday with her and about a group of 10 of us. Um, and we would do like a fall and like a spring session type of thing, but it was every Saturday and it was traditional mediumships, uh, spiritualism, just sitting, talking about what came up the week earlier, doing a little psychometry, doing a little meditation and some healing work. It was, it was nothing complex, just an hour and a half, two hours of that every Saturday. That is my foundation for moving into meeting more shamanistic practices more teachers and, and more of the metaphysical edge of all of that as well so it's really snowballed from that moment of of the the mediumship into working with astrologers and you name it and it kind of literally all landed in my lap and it was like it was the thing that i could do to make money in the moment and to get by and not struggle was tapping into this metaphysical world and this magic that was there and kind of innate so I, it really was an interesting journey of me being okay with this being real and actually having to not prove to myself but also just like tell myself it doesn't matter what the world thinks this is very real to me and this is what's happening so i need to move it forward mm. That's incredible. So I guess when you told the world, the universe to uh, show you magic, they meant it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So now I'm sitting in the first church of witchcraft that was recognized by the United States of America and Louisiana. I mean, like, literally, I'm so through all of my career and I worked with a, a bunch of astrologers, did a national astrology conferences, all these different types of events and traveled with friends of mine that did some really amazing things as well as I do movie work on as well. So it's kind of balanced. I realized I have to have that, that muggle world balance of art and create because that gives me the fuel to do this work as well, to help people in another way. And so I really just somewhere along the line started balancing out the spiritual work with, with uh, the, the, the other side and just dealing with it. And, and again, here we are, here I sit putting together a, a full little shop of magic where we're teaching what we can about how the simplest things come from nature and the simplest elements can create so much healing on such a subtle body level, but even a larger level, you know, I never realized how easy it was to blend a few herbs and use them to get rid of my cold <laughs> or to, to make some witches <laughs> brew up when I'm, when I'm having a, a hack in the, in the fall and in the winter time, you know, just paying attention to what Mama Gaia has given us and, and using her tools, we can thrive in, in what really isn't magic. It's just the natural way of life, you know? Definitely. That's, yeah. what, that's what magic is for me. It's uh, utilizing the tools that you have to enhance the things around you rather than just like letting life happen to you. Um, that's a great, my next question was definitely good. Tell us about hands of fate. I was tooling around on the website a little bit earlier this morning and you guys have all kinds of stuff, oils and soaps and like, so yeah, tell everybody about <laughs> what hands of fate is. <laughs> well, so, um, 
Hands of Faith, the idea is, you know, uh, a reading parlor um, and also healing space. I do uh, some heavy cranial sacral work. I deal with people with past life regression, things of that nature. Not a lot of stuff that I put out there um, to the public eye. People usually come to me and we I'll, I'll bring those things up as we use it. Um, what I've always realized is we're really horrible with spiritual hygiene. And that's my best way to put it is it's... Yeah, I, I call it spiritual hygiene. Uh, I think of Pigpen from Snoopy and um, Charlie Brown. <laughs> How he always has that dirt around him, and he's always like a little bundle of chaos. So many times in the world, and this is kind of a, a way that I look at it, is we're human biomagnets. We pick up things everywhere we go. We leave traces of everywhere we are as well. Um, so my thing is, we have to clear that cash. We have to clear that energy field, that auric field. A lot of us will carry so much of that in our subconscious brain, pieces of old stories, the brokenness, the the, the hurt, and all of that, that we never mm. really work through it. Or we work through huge chunks of it, and there's still dust bunnies in the corner, which is some of that shadow work that sneaks up later on us in life. Um, mm. My whole idea is we need to have things that can heal and soothe the subtle energy body as well as the physical body. And so we've created a whole line of aura sprays. Um, it started out, <coughs> excuse me, back in uh, 10, 10, 10, when I was in Portland, we did a celebration um, and we made a, it was called Sacred Heart. And it is an oil that is uh, heaven and earth through the heart. It's a it's a frankincense rich uh, base with a, a little bit of spikenard, clary sage, hyssop for a blessing oil, um, and mm -hmm. um, the the frankincense. But it's, it's rose in it as well, so it it's the frankincense hits the high note. The rose facilitates it through the heart. The spikenard grounds it. Um, I realized in using that, it was keeping my energy bubble that much bigger and brighter. Just a little dab on the back of the neck, on my wrists, on some of the, the central points of energy points of the body. And I just started using it all the time and was making it up as I was doing work on people. And it evolved to me making other little oils and things. Well, that's now become some of my ideas along with Charlie, who works for us, the Love Witch. Uh, his nose and my partner, Brick, we all blend these incredible oils and like we've got Sacred Heart and Agape. They're both real cleansing oils. Um, we have also another one. We're starting a whole elemental line, the Cleansing Fire. Um, all of them have a little mm. gem inside of them as well to bring the, the gem quality to them. Uh, the essential oils that draw that as well too. So, And I use crystal bowls and we do some medicine singing to them. So like when we were making our new Florida water, um, is it's a, a little small. It's only just a couple ounce bottle, but it's so potent what I do is I sing the shamanic songs, the medicine songs to wake the plants up as we're pouring in each of the rows and all of that as well. I, I, I do a lot of uh, indigenous and also South, South American uh, shamanistic uh, healing with people. So I'll use some of the songs in Quechua, waking up the devas and, and the different plant energies in those things as we're making them. People don't realize that's really what it's about is intention. If you put a pinch of intention while you're blending this stuff, it's going to amplify it tenfold. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you can't just dump and pour. Mm -hmm. You'll get a good product. But if you do it with intention, mm -hmm. it kicks ass. <laughs> mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love yeah. that. You're really harnessing the power of the plants through your intentions. And at the end of the day, we are all the magical beings ourselves. Well, we, we're part of that, that, that world, you know, we're part of that nature and that creation. And um, we have to realize all these plants were put here to support us as us to support them as well. And um, we've gotten away from it, from our urban living and some of that as well too. And we forget how simple it is to turn to something as simple as elderberry, um, which they're, everybody's doing now with some boo call and all these things like that. But, you know, we've been using it for years in a little cough syrup and just going and grabbing it and making it ourselves. You know, um, to me, it's kind of a wave of the future. If people would get on the bandwagon, make your own tinctures, make your own things that work for you, share them with friends, share the recipes. That's how we grow. That's how we create more magic. I cannot agree mm -hmm. more at all i think something that i found is how people like feel so intimidated 
around making their own just like blessed oil, just something very simple. And it's just like, you, you got this. You got to believe in this richness, this power, this connectivity, just all the things. Um, but, you know, the, I think that also goes back to the, the training and the dogma that we have all been born into at this point. Well, you want to know what was really mm. interesting is so um, our goal with the store is keep it simple. Let people come in, help them out um, in the moment that we can. If we have some things that we can give them or some tools for the, the journey, that's what I like to call everything. It's all tools for the journey. We're all on our journey here. We all have to put together our own medicine pouch of what's going to work. Um, that's mm -hmm. what we try to provide for you. And whether we can give you names of books to read or, or different Oracle decks to check out, um, or different oils and essentials, we're there for that reason. We are the elders. We're moving into that. We are the sages. We are mm. the new tribe. We are the new shamanism. We are the new urban shamans. Um, we have to embrace that at some point and be okay with it and not give a flying rat's ass what anyone else thinks of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's so hard because there's so many fickle little um, things that I've seen over the years of these little picky witch wars and like, oh, but so-and-so this does that. And I'm like, you know what? You're, you're already losing the magic by, by the way you're talking about this here. You have to live mm. in the awe. You have to live in the wonderment. The, the Lakota talk about the great Wonka Tonka, the, the great mystery. Um, that's kind of the place where I try to live in all of this. If we live in the mystery, we will see those miracles happen. Learn what mm -hmm. you can. Let the spirit guide you. And and if you have questions, talk to teachers, talk to peers, talk to elders. Listen to some of the other people around that are even younger because they do have intuition coming. Yes, they have some life mm -hmm. to learn. And we have a little bit different filter, but we can learn from them as well. You know, it's important that we're all teachers and all peers to each other. You know, mm, and that is community. Yeah, yeah. The one thing I want to say <laughs> that is really interesting is I've tried to keep it really simple at the store as we're growing it to get it to a larger, a larger thing. But we just want to have some oils and some candles and some simple tools. When I was at Pagan Pride, a lady came up to the booth and started chatting with us, and she was part of Mary Oneida Toop's uh, coven back in 72, 75, uh, somewhere in there. Um, she was part of it, and she started telling us stories that the space was just a small space, and Mary just did readings, healing work with people. She just had some herbs, some oils, and just some candles. It's kind of almost exactly what we have there. And I'm really laughing mm -hmm. about that because that's really what the, the place wants. It doesn't have to be complicated or difficult. We don't need all of these other things. We can teach people where to get those or create their tools but really the essence is in the nature it's in what we have before our hands you know mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's been yeah, a big so message that, that, that i've oops, sorry becky you can go <laughs> i was gonna say that leads me to a question about with the expansion of the store what are your plans for that new space oh so we have a, we've we've doubled the size uh and we now have what i can be um, a classroom as well as a seance room. It's just um, got some great little uh, old Victorian furniture in it. Um, we're keeping it very simple in there. Um, we've got some items from people that were prominent in New Orleans that we're putting in there as well to bring some of the magic of New Orleans in. But really, it's a place to just sit and learn and have spirit speak. Um, we're doing seances on the weekends uh, during the month of October, Friday night, Saturday night as we can. Um, my whole goal also, though, is to start like a Saturday morning class and like a Tuesday night class again. I used to do just a sitting circle. And it was a basic uh, spiritualist sitting circle where we sit, talk about what went on, do a little meditation, a little psychometry, and just simply be there with each other to create the battery of community. What spiritualists believe is as you sit regularly, spirit taps in regularly at that time. And I believe that to be very true. Some of my strongest times for chatting can be um, Saturday mornings because that's what I for years did for so long. I kind of want to make sure we create that space here and that we have it available as a place where people can drop in, know that every Saturday morning um, for a couple hours you can sit and talk a little magic, 
do a little meditation and a little clearing and step back out into the world. Again, I want to kind of do a little similar thing on Tuesday nights where we can share some healing, maybe do a little Reiki share again. Um, we have to be approachable. We have to have doorways of new things coming through. I want to have teachers coming in doing small classes. All that is part of this expansion. The eventual goal is to have the whole space back to original of what it was. Right now, we have half of the space that is ours. The goal will be within the next years to try to take the other half of it over um, and create an even larger store, maybe a place for a little tea, tea counter and coffee clutch, um, a place for community to sit and just have these conversations like we're having now. That's incredible. I'm really looking forward to that. I remember um, actually one of the first times, you know, that we had sat down and spoke for a while, um, listening to your vision and dream of having that space. And um, just to see that come to fruition, it really makes my heart happy. Yeah. Well, I want to tell you, you know, the weirdest part with that space was I was working, I'm going to tell you the magic of how it got there. Working in Atlanta, I kept hearing a voice in my head saying, you got to get back to L.A., you got to get back to L.A., you got to get back to L.A. So I pack my stuff up and I drive cross country to Los Angeles, um, back to where I had lived for years. And that's where I, I wrote my book and spent some time there and nothing was really meshing up for me. Um, I had to come back out and grab more things from Atlanta to move it. And when I was driving back to Atlanta, my car broke down in Albuquerque for seven days. And <laughs> oh, you don't even want to. That's a story I, that would be a whole nother hour conversation. But um, the way that people wove into my life there, I mean, magic down to I'm stuck on the side of the road. The tow truck driver picks me up. And I'm, I'm chatting uh, with him and he's like, I'm sorry, I deal with fatalities. And I was dropping a car off and I, I had a light chuckle under my breath and he goes, why are you giggling? I'm like, I said, I'm a, I'm a medium. I said, I deal with more dead people than I do live people a lot of times. <laughs> and, and he goes, well, you know, he's, he's like, he goes, you think that's something you should check out? There's, um, where we take all the cars is in Lubbock, Texas, and they're having these weird issues where they can see people on the cameras. And there's this there's this lady that looks like she's there and like a young boy as well that they're catching on the camera as night like ghosts. And they've been trying to figure it out. So we have this conversation and he drops off my car and drops me off at a hotel. And I'm t chatting on social media on one of those apps, uh, who's local, whatever, and start chatting with this gentleman. And he t starts talking to me and he is, he works for a funeral home and he is, does the cremation services and stuff like that. But since I'm there for a week, we meet up and have lunch and chat and all this stuff. He proceeds to tell me that his family all died in a car accident outside of Lubbock, Texas. And wow. it was, his, it was his, <laughs> his aunt and his cousin younger cousin that passed away in their van and um you know he's been having dreams about them and that car would have went to that lot where the fatality accidents have gone and so of course wow. this weird week unfolds where we end up going to el chameo which is a very sacred place there where um the the, the christians took over because the natives called it sacred. The Christians decided to put a church there. Um, anyway, mm, that's naturally. everywhere in the world. But um, there's just a whole healing that happened for him in that process through that whole thing. And it all was from this weird, my car breaking down on the side of the road and being stuck in a hotel. Right. And just when I'm finally get my car fixed and have this interesting healing with him and his family and all of that, I get on the road and come down to New Orleans for one day, it turns into eight days. <laughs> and chatting with a friend of mine here, he was like, well, you know, we should try to get a little storefront or something in the quarter. And I said, I can't do that right now. I've got a cousin who's having open heart surgery. I've got to go take care of him. Like, if you can find something down the road, great. Um, but right now I can't even think about it. So I kind of went about my way and took care of my stuff up in Atlanta and went and took care of my cousin in Iowa. And I got a call a couple months later and my friend was like, you won't believe this, but the guy, I have a guy who says he'll build a small room for us in his storefront if you, um, for X amount of dollars, like you talked about, which is just unheard of. And I started laughing. I said, mm. well, I'll be down there in two months. Tell him we want it. <laughs> 
And right. it was supposed to be this little tiny room next to the storefront that we have. It was just where the chess cave is now. It was just going to be a little room for reading out of. The day that I get down here to pay him rent on reading uh, for, on that room, um, the lady who was running tours next door decided she no longer wanted this space. And he goes, the whole storefront is available next door. Would you want that? And I said, sure, Jesus. two months. I said, give me two <laughs> weeks and we'll, and we'll turn around and do it. And so two weeks later, I'm trying to make that storefront happen. You know? Wow. So that's, mm. that's magic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whether oh, that's really. magic. <laughs> Whether I stumble through it or don't listen or whatever. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But here we are now, you know, um, like I'm three years plus later, almost four years. We're going to be hitting four years at the top of the year of being there. We've made it through COVID. We've, it's time to weave that web even larger. It's time for us to create on a, on a grander scale. I want to find ways that we can come together and do some, some moon celebrations locally here. But maybe there's a property up over the lake that um, I would like to go to and maybe take a busload of people up there every few months and do some moons and things of that nature. It's time to get back into those cycles again, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So I'm curious, um, since you have this glorious shop, how do you work with the spirits? <laughs> like, yeah, oh my, let you my goodness, take that. Girl. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> Three in the morning, I wake up and I tell them, whoever you are, come visit me at the shop when you're humans there. Mm. <laughs> like, that's mm. a huge piece of my mm. nightly. Um, literally, and I'm being realistic there. Um, you can ask my partner, Brick. <laughs> He'll tell you that. It's like, my business hours are 10 to 5. Exactly. Come back then. <laughs> By me. So here's a really interesting story. Like, I, was, I stepped away from this stuff every once in a while because it, it's kind of mind-blowing when you have these huge experiences happening. And so I would do mm. some movie work and whatever, but things would happen with the actors or around me while we were on set or whatever, and things would come out of my mouth that I shouldn't know or was healing healing aspects. Mm. And I realized by me centralizing my energy at the store, I do tend to – I can separate it out a lot more. I can get a lot more of that healing work and that other work to happen more so at the store than just as randomly as it was day to day in my life. Which was disturbing for mm. other people because I, I don't think that anything of it. I'll just start saying something and they'll like, I would meet people and they would like, we'd have a conversation when I'd see them like a, a week later, they'd be extremely standoffish. Um, and I wouldn't know what was up and it would take two or three more times of seeing them. And then I'd say, you know, when I first met you, you started talking and you were talking about something that I had just dealt with two days earlier when my grandma passed. And, and mm. I didn't realize that spirit is speaking so much all the time through me that I really need to focal, have a focus point and do it. So the store is really the place. People will walk up there. Yesterday I had a gentleman who, you know, works at a place here in the quarter that has had some real interesting haunted history in it. And out of nowhere, he came walking in. He walked by the store like three or four times. And then he just like walked in. He's like, something wants me to talk to you. What's going on? And took him to the back room and we had quite a conversation um, because he is dealing with some, a really haunted property here. Um, It's really Mm. hard to explain. I just think that in life we're drawn to what we need to learn or understand. And I think there's, we're, we're putting out a beacon there for, for spirits that are also lost. And so you've got Mm. people that hold on to the traumatized parts of those from grief and sorrow and things as well. So a lot of those pieces want released. um, And us humans don't want to release it because we're too emotionally bonded and woven into it. So spiritualists have this belief structure Mm. that a spirit can, when they pass, it can be a tragedy. They can shatter. All the people that love them hold those pieces. And then the spirit as it heals on the other side in the life review shows up in dream time to pick them up and to help people. And to me, that seems very accurate. And it seems a lot more of what happens these days is people come to me and a lot of times they're holding these pieces or these aspects of, of these people. And, and they're just wanting the release from the grief, from the sorrow um, that they're holding. They want them to know that they're free on the other side, that they don't have to hold that pain. So, People come to me, we start a conversation, and it can go 
10 ways to Sunday. I mean, it could, it, it, I've, I've had some heavy stuff that has been pretty dark. Um, and I don't like to put names on this stuff because the, if you name it, you claim it <laughs> kind of thing, mm. you know? So, um, I, we deal with whatever it is that comes up with the people, you know? And, um, here it is now 30 years later from the time I kind of started that spiritual journey of like, what the hell is this? And here we are sitting steeped in the city of magic itself in, in one of the, the most crazy places you can believe. So people come in, we start talking and hopefully they get some healing out of it. That's, that's kind of where we go mm. with it, you know? Mm. <laughs> Yeah, you got my candle all over here just going wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So that leads me to want, like we have to talk about these balances. We ha- absolutely Okay, so walk us through what it's like to prepare for the space of, you know, for people who may know each other, people who may not, just like, what's that experience well, like? Well, one reason why I like to keep seances small and intimate is I don't, I'm not a big fan of um, gallery readings or um, larger scale rooms of people filled with, with uh, medium shouting out what they're feeling because it's, it's almost triggering to some people that are there for real messages um, I like to make sure that intimacy happens, that people can ask their questions and that they have the ability to have, have that time and that space in there. So we keep it small first off to begin with, just for all of us to be able to hold that space properly for what's going to come, come through. Um, the entire store um, is completely crystal gridded and with herbs and um, with intention. And um, I've, set it up it's a temple in its own right um you walk Mm. into this space it's temple space it's healing space that's what happens there um you come there to lay down your burden you know that's Mm. that's what it's about we really are to Mm. be kind of that take up that yoke for the people and help offer them the petition so that way their spirits can help a lot of people don't know how to talk to their spirits Ooh. No, they, you know, you, you know, it's mm. true. <laughs> they just they they they, yeah. they say a prayer to this this being that they don't even quite know if they believe in. Ooh, you know, mm. and, mm-hmm. and it's, it, mm-hmm. it's that. How do the messages? How do the messages come through for you? Like I know everybody kind of some people see, some people hear, some people feel. Like, do you see actual spirits, or is it more oh, of a like in your mind's eye? It's everything. So when I was putting, so when we were putting the room up, um, they had just cut the door out uh, between the two spaces, and um, I was cleaning up the space, and I like, I looked out of the corner of my eye, and I shocked myself, and I, I was like. Mary, is that you? And I like shocked the, 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 the waves went right through me and it felt and looked out of the corner of my eye. Like it was Mary and I to tube standing there excited that we were opening the space up for what she'd always oh. intended. And it was literally full born apparition off to my, uh, my right side. And I get mm. that stuff. Uh, usually it's in flashes. Usually it's with my eyes closed. Usually it's in my mind's eye. This was with my eyes open, full apparition right wow. there. Wow. And so the reality check is, I think, and I also he- hear, smell, touch, all of the different, I, I have a tendency to have all of it. So every spirit communicates like they kind of would when they were alive. Um, it's just, they don't mm-hmm. have a human suit to do it through. So sometimes it's mm-hmm. pictures, sometimes it's words, sometimes it's songs. I get a lot of songs and a lot of pictures of jewelry. And I think it's mm. because it's ways that we can connect directly with the people that have crossed and you can't really question some of that stuff. There's no re- there's no way I would know that you have aunt Gertrude's wedding ring that she got from her second husband, blah, 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 things of that nature. (laughs) You know, I don't know how I know it either, but she's obviously whispering in my ear, you know? (laughs) So when you start to get out of your own way with this, um, spirit does just speak, you know, and that's kind of what the Mm. store is for. When we get there, it's a place for spirit to just plug in. We plug in and spirit works through us. And we try to facilitate those that come that we can help. It's not about us saving the world. It's about helping those that come to us. You know, mm. 
Mm, 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 yeah. And mm. I think that that brings up a really good point too, is you can't help someone who isn't ready to be helped. So mm. you're opening the doors and, for whoever comes and is yes. seeking the help. And exactly. Healing. And, and the wonderful part about being here is you have this international city that is, it's not really the U S it's the Northern Caribbean. It has a different vibe to it than what you're going to get anywhere in the U S it has great culture, great art, but you have this homogeny of every culture kind of coming here because you do get the heavy influence of the Caribbean here. You get all of the different countries coming here. Last week, it was all about the Australians in town, it seemed like. Um, I, I was having more and more readings <laughs> by people from Australia because it must have been inexpensive for them to get here. But it's a, an interesting central location. I moved here because it's only 300,000 people. Um, and we get the quiet time of the week. And then we get a million people drop in on the weekend. You know, um, there's a mm -hmm. lot to be said about that interaction and what this town is really really doing here and how it is helping people, how it is kind of supporting a whole nother thing, you know? So. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is Oof. making me so cold. Wow. Oh my oh. God. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, that's incredible. Mm. So with you like leading this shop, is there anything particular that you do to keep yourself protected and <laughs> but outside of your oils or is it just mainly like all the products? Well, that you so use? the thing is, I think it's, uh, you know, we have to keep ourselves in check daily. What I try to explain to people is we should get up in the morning. Um, we should kind of take a shower or however we prepare for our day and kind of wash away dream time and if we have to honor any of those write some of those notes down because dream time is real time in my opinion and this is how the theater of the absurd of how it plays out um we need to kind of recognize what spirit's bringing us at night write those notes down so mm. we don't forget but then we also have to kind of clear ourselves with that energy and put on our armor for the day and so I kind of have this little ritual in my head where when I get in the shower, it washes away dream time down the drain and it puts on that golden protection, that armor on me. And then I also think mm. about like one of my favorite meditations is just imagining this little pinpoint of light in your heart and then just slowly filling up the heart and let that push out into the rest of your body and push into the lungs and, and let the internal organs just really start to feel that relaxation but that healing, but then push all of that out to the outer edges of your body and then just let your body fill with that mm. energy that is just yours. Nothing else, just your channel calling it in. And then mm. create that bubble around you that, that's your bubble for the day. Let this be my safety bubble. Don't let anyone really interfere, tear into it or whatever. If they do, keep, we'll keep an eye on it. But check yourself midday. Are you having a bad day? Are people throwing darts at you all day energetically? You know, sometimes you walk in an office door and the glare you get from people is like someone sliced you with a razor blade, you know, mm. <laughs> and, and that can be that that those nuances of energetic throws can actually tear our auric field as well. It that's the thing about the subtle energy body. We can allow a lot of things to mess with that auric field. We have to kind of be centered in ourselves not self-centered, centered in ourselves. It's a whole different thing. Um, and that's where people kind of get mm -hmm. in the way. But I think the more centered we are in ourselves, the stronger we, we carry that, that bubble around with us and we protect ourselves. And using the oils and using other – do a salt bath once or twice a week if you're feeling funky. You know, mm. throw a cup of salt in there. You can also do a little bit of uh, a cup of soda, a cup of salt, and uh, a little bit of coffee. You know, under only 15 minutes and it draws mm. as a detox. It'll draw all the crap out of your mm. body, but don't stay more than 15 minutes because then it starts to absorb back into the body. So these are really mm. interesting, simple things that we can learn along the way, but also we have to remember to use them. It's again, it's tools in the toolbox. We have to open the toolbox and use them. <laughs> I love that. that That's is, so funny. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> we have the tools, but we have yeah, to use them. Yeah. And that's what I, I mean. I think, you know, I think that's that's my biggest problem. Well, I think we, we all are that way. And it's like, again, when you start to recognize your hands can be your wand, um, it's a whole nother story. You can mm -hmm. orchestrate a whole orchestra. You can, you can manipulate, right. you can pull that energy in. Um, Again, so much of this is about understanding yourself and being centered 
in what you know and being open to listening and hearing the subtleties of how spirit speaks. In the beginning, I laughed because I used to get this itch on the end of my nose. I would feel like someone was rubbing my ear. Someone was tapping the back of my head. I did not realize for the longest time that that was actually spirits getting my attention. You know, mm. and this is a, one, right. one of my favorite mm-hmm. jokes is, but it's not even a joke. It's very real. You women uh, all understand the the cycles of your body. You have to listen to every nuance, every flip, every tip, every tap. Men think it's mm. gas, that flip of the stomach. <laughs> right. You know, it, it took me years to recognize something was tapping me there and saying, pay the hell attention. You know, we're right here. Right. Your stomach is erect because I'm trying to get your attention and you're not listening, you know. Um, so mm. our body is mm. that barometer. It's how we choose to listen to it. And then if we're not giving it the proper fuel, if we're not feeding it with the nutrition and we're feeding it with, with sludge, it, it's, it's like, you know, you need to put some additives in that fuel, <laughs> you know, and clear the body out. And I don't yep. think enough of us do seasonal detox. I think we should do a little bit of changing of the seasons. We should do a little detox. We're going into the fall now. We should be doing right now perfect day for it to do mm-hmm. a little a little uh celebration and clearing and kind of step into the root vegetable time of the year where we'll, we should be roasting root mm-hmm. vegetables and and eating with mother nature um that's how we do this that's that natural cycle of 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 the human suit you know mm. Mm-hmm. so i have mm-hmm. a question for yes. you sam um, we, we like to ask all of the guests this, and for somebody that has been on your spiritual journey for, you said 30 yep. years now, um, what is something new that you are studying right now? That's got you like really excited. What's that new thing that you're looking into and studying? Oh, wow. Um, it's so interesting. Cause I'm actually think I might go and it's not new. It's something I've been sitting on for a minute, but I think I actually mm-hmm. want to go and get, um, a license and to be a licensed, um, to deal with herbs and herbology, um, in a way that I can actually make yes. all of those little tinctures and apothecary stuff, um, in a, in a legal way that we can all really use them and no one can get in the way, you know, um, that I think is really important because I, I do a lot of, uh, I've done medicine ceremonies and I do a lot of shamanic South American stuff of that nature. And, and plants really mm-hmm. are the source of so much healing and so much of what we need. The answers are there. So many of our medications, so many of our cures have come from the jungle. Um, and we're, we're, we're cutting it down at such a, a, a force. They're still discovering things that we've not known that are healing stuff. We have to take nature and re-harness it and understand its tools. Shamans in down in Peru, down in uh, Brazil, will go for a year when they're, when they're sent out on, for a year to not come back for a year. And they have to go through the jungle and they have to basically eat the plants, talk to them, figure out what they all do and come back, um, to the tribe and, and talk to the shaman that's there and, and go through that whole understanding. But it's a year in the middle of the jungle, just them and the plants. So they have to eat things and not die. (laughs) That's really important. And not die. Exactly. Yeah. But, right. but, but that's why, the, you know, that's, it, it makes me wonder, you know, who took ayahuasca first as a vine and ground it up because it's so hard like bark yeah. and who yeah. ground it up and made it and created this noni that people drink that takes them into this whole other realm. But the detox that that does for the body is incredible. But not only are there ayahuasca ceremonies, but there's rubber plant ceremonies where people will drink the rubber from the rubber tree mm-hmm. and they will detox yeah. in a similar fashion. There's so many other types of things that we can use that don't give you necessarily the psychedelia as well, because that freaks people out sometimes. Um, but Absolutely. there's so much of that is just it's it's right in the palm of our hands, and we're too busy making all of these other things. You know what I mean? Um, we have to get back to basics, mm. kind of back to the, the the basic building foundation of, of what created all of this to begin with. Right. Yeah. And something that I've read that really stood out to me in learning about plant mm-hmm. medicine is that those the first shaman and practitioners, they listened to mm-hmm. the plants. Exactly. To see what was their purpose and how we could safely yeah. use them. So there was that yep. communication, you know, that spiritual connection with the human and the plant. And that's and, and that's Absolutely. what I'm saying is it's so wild to um 
to sit here from a westernized culture and then get steeped deep into that and start to see that reality. And then as you start to pull out Mm -hmm. of it going, how can we tap into that in, in in a great way? And so like, again, this is the start with the apothecary stuff that we're doing that are more the sprays in the body and the room and stuff. We're using all natural essential oils that are derived from these plants. We're using all these things. It's at their purest and finest. You know, um, Mm -hmm. we should be able to do that all the time. We should be making cat's claw tea and drinking it for detox. That should just be a natural thing that we have in the cupboard, you know. Um, But Mm -hmm. again, we have Mm -hmm. been so programmed by everything we've seen on TV and the westernization of of, of the the human consciousness that um, it's kind of like we have to start peeling some of that stuff back down and starting at the base again and, and really understanding what builds our reality, what is our surroundings, what supports us, what takes away from us. Absolutely. I could not agree more. I think when I open myself up to understanding plants mm. and what they bring, it my ancestors really guided me to start with one mm-hmm. plant don't try to learn all the things. Just start with mm. one plant and learn it. T- let it teach you. Understand how it works mm. for you, but also understand how it works for other people. Because that was something I wasn't prepared to understand around how rosemary may be cleansing for me, but for you, it may set some <laughs> shit on fire. It may <laughs> burn a hole in yep. something. And like that was so key to the way that I may advise somebody else to use a certain plant or not advise somebody else Mm -hmm. to use a plant um, and how it can be overwhelming because there are so many fucking plants in the world. Um. (laughs) That's why I said it. I think I want to just learn from, from an accredited place just to get what they're speaking on top of what I've learned from all the witches over the years. I guess that's the best way to put it, Mm -hmm. you know? You know, mm-hmm, but, mm-hmm. and start local too. just like learn what's in your backyard. Well, and, that, and that's literally that's, how so much of this is. So when, when I start to, I was chatting with uh, my husband Brick about this and we were watching um, the witch the other night. Okay. Cause I hadn't seen that in a number of years and we're in that Halloween season. And I was kind of um, mm-hmm. just thinking about what the Puritans brought over here to America were pieces of the the magic of the old country, but then they steeped it into the Appalachian magic uh, and the natural folk mm. magic that was here and created a whole nother thing. And so you have to really be in your environment and understand what is being invoked um, and what is being asked of and, and what works where, because I've, I've gotten back to Pennsylvania and had to deal with some situations and I can feel the steeped folk magic there that is different than what I understand in any of the Druidic or Wiccan or understandings. It's, it's a deeper darkness uh, or a different mm. magic. Um, so it's really interesting how as, as people have settled around the world and brought their pieces with them, they've, 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 moshed them together and created even more it's that that hoodoo idea it's some of that stuff where where they're masking some of the orisha with saints you know it's fascinating Mm -hmm. when you start to Mm -hmm. break it down and see everybody's just using what they got (laughs) so to speak you know absolutely so but i'm loving it i'm telling you this is a magical city when i came here 15 years ago i i knew i wanted to be here but then it started to where i would show up two three times a year And then now here we, Mm. here I am, you know, um, in the middle of creating even more magic in a store that is one of the most magical in town, in my opinion, you know, it's very, very exciting. Oh, that is just so cool. It is. It's crazy, (laughs) isn't it? You know? It is just so cool. Yeah. Like, what would you say to like, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I have another question. Um, I want, you know, you seem like, uh, such a good teacher and so what would you recommend for somebody that is new on their path and is really interested in communicating with spirits okay. and um, plants and things like that how do they well, connect I think honestly the first thing someone can do is first recognize what who they are learning about themselves and I'm gonna I'm gonna do twofold here. There's an amazing book written by Eckhart Tolle called A New Earth, and um, it talks about the pain body, okay? The reason why I mentioned this book 
<clears throat> is it revolutionized my understanding of my empathy. And when I would okay. carry other people's things, I started to recognize that so many of my headaches, my stomach aches, my back aches were never really mine. They were things trying to get my attention to tell me their story, or they were clients that were coming. So one of the first things people need to do is first understand what is theirs that they're carrying in their vessel so they can then move forward from that point as well. Do you know what I mean? Um, so first off, mm -hmm. learning who you are, finding teachers and people that you can talk to and have these ridiculous conversations with that don't think that no one thinks it's ridiculous. Every, everything yes. is information. <laughs> there, there's no judgment here. Um, we need to keep it in the, the information way that when people ask questions, they're trying to have a different understanding. We can't be judging. We can't be putting a filter on that. We have to give them what we know and try to turn them to the right people to learn more. You know, it, it never stops with one teacher. If you stop looking for teachers and, and learning, your, your, your life is ending right there. You need to constantly be learning every day. Um, you need to be open to hearing new ideas. Um, my, the simplest thing, too, is learning a simple five to ten minute meditation in the morning and the evening and really holding yourself accountable to that is going to center yourself and give yourself quicker connection with spirit than you would ever realize. But people can't even calm themselves that long to do it. They think they have to meditate for an hour at a time or a half hour in, in a Buddhist way. No, you don't. Sit in a chair. Turn yourself off. Ask spirit what's being asked of you. Listen, feel, smell, see, let those things come to you. And, and then understand what that is and build that over days and talk to people about it. I had this really weird thing happen. Have you ever had that before? What do you think? You know, no one is last word on it. We are the, the, the builders of our universe. We are the creators. We are the creator gods, um, whether we choose to realize that or not. You know, we make this reality what it is to a certain degree, you know? Yeah. I love that. That's really powerful. And I, I feel like that's part of, you know, following this type of a spiritual path is that, that it is empowering. Mm -hmm. um, but that it also, you know, it's a lot of accountability. <laughs> Whenever something's going wrong, it's like, you have to look at yourself first and be like, where did I fuck up? Exactly. I do that a lot. Like shit there. I did it again. <laughs> Right, right. It's not like you can blame, you know, put the blame on something and, else. And not, but the thing is, it's it's not judging yourself. It's not beating yourself up. It's recognizing the human existence right. and experience. We were so we're these these eternal spirits or souls. We travel through lifetimes for eternity. We we know that we're guaranteed that in all of these different religious uh, spiritual understandings, and we jump in human suit to human suit to human suit. We're gonna have reference to other lifetimes. We're gonna have familiarities with other people. We're gonna have weird stuff go down that we don't quite understand. All we can do is go deeper, go further in, ask more questions, and and let your spirit show you more and get out of the way. Push that ego off to the side. And this is this is that weird thing is I, I have a lot of amazing teachers I've met over the years and people I see going through this stuff, but then they level off and they stop and they, they don't keep learning. Like you were asking, what's the next thing to learn? And I'm like, well, actually... Mm -hmm. Every day we should just be learning something um, or listening or understanding or observing mm -hmm. another something going on around us. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. just a whole different way than what we're taught. And I, like I said, I think we get, get stuck in human mode and not in a, a eternal mode. It's <laughs> the best way to put mm -hmm. it. Right. You know? Yeah, because if we think about it as like certain levels, like, well, once I get to mm -hmm. this level or once I know this or, you know, whatever, I'll be, I'll be the master or the teacher or whatever. But I, I feel like we need to just keep ourselves open that we are constantly growing and we're meeting new people and we're learning from each well, other. And, that's, and my thing is if we keep the circle open and available, the teachers will also come to us if we're asking. Uh, but we have to be mm -hmm. willing to recognize that as well. We have to be recognizing to to open that door and listen too, because it, I tell you, you know, it was like I said, is I never realized that I would go so deep down a rabbit hole, and I've got about seven different shamanic teachers uh, of medicine 
tribes from out of Peru and Costa Rica. And that was never even in my mindset um, for where I would be. I have a whole group of uh, shamanistic uh, Lakota from uh, Portland that I dealt with where I spent three years in sweat lodges with them during moon. You know, so there's there's all of these things that are experiences of the world that go experience them, see how it fits with you, see if it works with your spirit. Don't be judging it, but honor it because it might transform you and take you to that next level of what you need to be. Um, but you have to push yourself to do it, too. It's not going to just always land in your lap. You've got to recognize it and then step into it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, mm. That's beautiful. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting. And then the other thing, too, is we are here as humans for a reason to learn some lessons. So don't beat yourself up. Life takes time. <laughs> Someone told me that years ago, and I thought that was the most ridiculous thing. What do you mean life takes time? <laughs> um, I realize now some of the visions I had some 20 years ago are just now coming to fruition. I was given a long-term vision and understanding, and I've been trying to force something that, that wasn't ready yet. I had to let mm. the, the time, the earthly time set in and things evolve to that point so we could have those things. But I was to remember that it was coming and that I was working towards that goal. Mm. Mm. that's powerful and makes me super excited about where the fuck we're going next <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure that one out myself <laughs> absolutely uh, this was just like a breath of fresh thank air thank you it was you know what I needed this too um it's so mm. important that we create community I'm so excited about uh, the pagan pride that happened that we were finally able to see face to face and be together in that way. And we need to just start stepping into it and leaning into it and figuring out what are those monthly things we can do? What are those quarterly things we can do? How do we want to support each other and give people the dance floor to learn a new dance and also the space mm -hmm. for us to teach too, you know? So Absolutely. my thing is that's a, that's a, a huge line of mine. And I joke about it. There's 7 billion people on this planet, all perfect in their universe. Um, when are we mm. going to allow all on the same dance floor? When are we going to allow ourselves to watch some of the new moves? And when are we going to allow ourselves to get out there and actually show people some dance moves and I'll learn to dance on the mm. same floor in the same orchestra, you know? Oh, I yeah. love that. I just got a, yeah. I really just got a mental image yeah. of that. That's amazing. Yeah. And that's what we're here for. We're here to, we're here to commune together and through this eternal, mm -hmm. eternal world, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm really mm -hmm. looking forward to that, you know, us continuing to work together in the future and setting up regular, you know, get togethers and things like that. And then just allowing the space for others to connect with one another. Exactly. Because sometimes, sometimes this life feels really isolating. It, mm -hmm. You know, it does. And the thing is, being in a city like this that is so magical and having a lot of magical people around, it's funny how we can also fall back into the mundane day to day. And mm -hmm. we have to mm -hmm. remember that there's people that come here. But I think having the store keeps my eyes a little more open because I have people every day walking in going, oh, my gosh, I don't have anything like this by me. Um, and they, and, and they, mm -hmm. they're excited. They have a place where they feel comfortable, where they can learn. We have to all be that light. Mm -hmm. We all have to shine that, that home. We all have to have that beacon going so that way people can find us, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm ready to play and make some big magic happen. So. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so how do I'm people glad you find shared you, it Sam? here. What was that? Oh, what was that? I said, how do people oh, find uh, you? Th they can, uh, handsoffatenola.com. Um, they can just go there. We're at 521 St. Philip. We're half a block up from the Joan of Arc statue right on St. Philip. We're two stores down from the um, Gem and Lapidary shop there. If you want to ever get some really cool, amazing rocks, he's got a great selection there of just about anything you would want. Um, but, yeah, we're right there um, in that you'll see Hands of Fate and uh, – all you got to do is type it in, look it up online, come and visit us. We're there. We're trying to do, we're trying to open up the six days a week. We're doing five days a week right now. We're usually from about noon, noon mm. till about, um, nine 30, 10 o'clock on the weekend. Sometimes during the week we close a little earlier. If it's a little quieter at night, you know how the town can be. 
kind of listen to the mm. tourists. <laughs> and then also mm-hmm. if the energy flips mm-hmm. and it gets crazy, we close the door because we know what can happen here in this town. <laughs> mm, right. right. But yeah, mm-hmm. just feel free to leave and- a message for us there, handsoffatenola.com. Um, you can look there. I've got Catherine is incredible. She leads uh, the seances as well as myself, as well as Brick. Um, she's a mm-hmm. sh- she told me she never was going to be a medium when she came to work for me. She does bones and ruins. And then I, what I laughed about mm-hmm. was watching her evolution into being this incredible medium, which I knew at the day that I met her. I'm like, you, do you talk to dead people? And she's like, nope, not going to ever do that. Here she is leading, <laughs> leading them. And, you know, she's got her pop-up Medusa's layer that goes on, which is in, an incredible idea. Again, it's that spiritual hygiene. It's taking care of yourself, that spiritual nurturing. Uh, Charlie, the love witch, amazing with couples readings, love witch, alchemy as well. Great nose for blending all of the oils. He helps to do a lot of the magical uh, blending of of the Grigri and that um, amazing tarot reader and palmist. Brick, uh, my partner, he has been a seer since he was a kid and talking to dead people. Um, interesting story. He was struck by lightning when he was four, was in a coma for seven months when he woke up he would talk to his grandmother about the people that were talking to him that wanted help and they were dead people. And so he, his entire life Mm. has basically dealt with this and trying to understand it. But he also turned it into doing attunement massage therapy for people. So people that are dealing with stuff on a spiritual level, it gets physically stuck in the body. He helps to work Mm. through that. And that's another thing that I do as well. I do cranial sacral and table sessions in a shamanic way. We store memories on a cellular level. So when trauma points hit, accidents, things happen, all of that allocates to the weakest part of the body and kind of sits there wrapped around. And it's all emotional and has to be processed out before the weak part of the body can actually heal. So the cranial Mm. sacral does some of that. We go a little bit deeper into the body, releasing it, getting the neurosystem to reconnect with all the connective tissue. Um, and also I do it in a, in a shamanic way where we'd clear any of the energies that you might've picked up along the way. So there's a lot happening at the store that we're trying to create and move forward to have a beautiful healing center right now. It's, that's the face that we have, but we can make it happen. We've got the private, uh, things available. All of us do. I've got a few other new readers that are coming in as well too, as we're going through October. So feel free to ask, get a hold of us, holler. You know, do a rain dance, whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> do you recommend people make appointments for readings? <laughs> I do prefer people make appointments for readings, honestly. So <clears throat> if, if you go online, you can book right away then. But if you're not sure who you want, they can just contact us and talk to us and we can figure it out. Yeah, that was one of the coolest things that's happened to me. I've had some friends in town visiting. Of course, whenever you come to New Orleans on vacation, you want to get a reading. And uh, we went for oysters at MRB. And I was like, "Mm, you need a reading from Hands of Fate. (laughs) They said, you want a reading? And so I start messaging the page and see who's there and start talking to Charlie and um, end up booking with Charlie. And then a different friend ended up uh, reading with Juliet. Um, I've gotten readings from Catherine. Um, so just uh, always an amazing experience whenever I interact with hands of faith. Mm. We're just super blessed to have you in the community. Oh, well, thank you for welcoming us. And we want to do more and, and be more. So just, you need stuff. You want to do stuff. Come and let's brainstorm. Let's make magic. Yes. Excellent. Yay. Yay. Thank you. We will. <laughs> I was like, yes, we will. Don't worry. <laughs> Just got to well, get that witch's planner yeah. out because uh, this bitch has a busy calendar. <laughs> a pretty busy witch, huh? <laughs> yep. I love it. Beautiful. Well, this has been a phenomenal conversation. Thank you so much, Sam, for coming to share your wisdom, your energy, and just just pouring out into the magical aspirations community and of course y'all heard where to find sam and all of his wonderful readers so be sure to check them out and without further ado we hope that y'all have a beautiful day yep. stay magical Blessed be. Stay, stay magical, magical. Everyone. love you love you too <laughs>
Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Magical Aspirations. Be sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Magical Aspirations to keep up with the latest and the greatest from Annalisa, Adriana, and Reverend Raven. And to join in on the Magical Aspirations conversations. Come check out our website, MagicalAspirations.com, to find bonuses from our guests, our Magical Aspirations blog, and to reach out to our magical hosts with questions, comments, reviews, or ideas for future episodes. We are so grateful for each and every one of you listening. Thank you again, and as always, stay true to your magic.